As you know, for many people, after Thursday night, it's not about the last three and a half years. It's about the next four and a half years. And let's run with the Pelosi question. How do we know that was just a bad episode and not just a condition? Yeah, look, I think the president uh, and his team have a lot of work to do uh, to get him out there to show the American people uh, that he is uh, fit, that he is alert, and that he can not only run the rest of this campaign, but that he can govern the country for another four years. So, you know, again, I think that they do have work to do. I think what Nancy said is absolutely accurate. Um, and uh, the things are moving a little faster than I expected. I, I thought they'd have a, about at least two or three. We were telling our clients they'd have two or three weeks uh, of polling uh, before they would have to make a decision. I thought, this is a personal opinion, I think they've got probably another uh, five to six days. I think that things are moving much faster against the president. Um, and uh, uh, we'll see. But uh, they are getting him out this weekend into the swing states, and we'll see how he does on the ABC uh, interview with Stephanopoulos. What do you think Chelsea needs to accomplish in those five days? What does he need to do? I think he needs to uh, be unscripted and show people that uh, he is fully uh, there and can make decisions, interact with people. I was with him on Friday night in New York, one on one uh, in, at a big event, but then uh, had about a three to four, three or four minute interaction with him one on one. He was very together, very alert. Um, you know, so he needs to show that to the American people instead of this perception that has been lingering of him post debate of someone that is, you know, really out of it. Charles, isn't the damage done, given the fact that people are really questioning whether they're being told the truth, especially from some of his advisors? And you have a number of Democratic congressmen, including one from Texas now, verbally saying that they hope he steps down. Does that mean that there already has been too much to shake his reelection chances? Yes, yeah, so I'd say a couple things. One, uh, the campaign expected polling, you know, to take a hit, and and you know the puck stuff that was leaked, you know, was pretty damaging. But again, I think you need to see more than just one poll. You need to see a set of polls over a week or so, um, and see if they can turn it around. But yes, I think a lot of damage was done. I'm I'm fully on board with that. I I understand it. So far, only one member of Congress, one sitting member of Congress, has called for him to step down. I do think that could be the next shoe to fall, though. Meaning, I'm you know, there's reporting this morning that there's uh, potentially 40 additional elected Democrats that are going to come out and call for him to step down. Um, that is uh, probably the most serious issue, that in addition to further deterioration in polling, uh, because uh, once you've got uh, you know elected members of your own party asking you to step aside, it's, it's hard to recover from that. There's also a question of who potentially would take his place. And this has been one of the arguments from some people who are saying that, you know, he's the best shot, uh, sort of to your point, because the other potential candidates, whether it's Kamala Harris, whether it's Gretchen Whitmore, whether it's Gavin Newsom, kind of pull similarly in a head-to-head -head matchup with Donald Trump. Do you feel like there is sufficient polling to really make that decision, given the fact that some of it isn't that extensive? Uh, polling to make a decision on, on who should replace him or if anyone should replace him? Both. Okay, so yes, so, so on on you know Plan B, Plan B is absolutely the vice president. Uh, I'm here to tell everybody that, and and that may not she may not be the favorite of every donor. You know most, you know a lot of donors come from financial services, and we tend to be a center right industry. Um, but but you know the any notion that uh, the White House, the DNC, uh, or or the Democratic congressional leadership is just going to overlook the vice president and go to some other candidate or have a, a an open contested convention, I think is a misread of the situation. Situation. The whole point of the vice president is to step in in the case of death, incapacitation, resignation, or in this case, the president stepping aside. Um, and, and I can tell you, they're going to try to do everything they can to avoid a contested convention, given what happened in 1968. Uh, LBJ's VP did ultimately win that nomination. He was so weakened, they lost the White House to Richard Nixon. I think that if Biden steps aside, they will try to engineer it so that Kamala, the vice president, uh, uh, ultimately locks up the nomination. Charles, I think it's worth pointing out to our audience that you're wearing two hats in this conversation as both a donor and an individual running a global advisory firm. And forgive me for saying this, and I hope you take this in the spirit in which it's intended. When you said you had a five-minute exchange with him, when it's behind closed doors and you tell people that he's sharp, cogent, these are things we've heard a million times, and then we all see him in public, and not just Thursday night, for a length of time now, and we see something else. And I just wonder how much tension there is between you as a donor and the opinion you offer on a program like this and the kind of advice that you're giving to clients right now. 
Yeah, so I'm giving the same advice. You know, we've had a base case that Biden would win. Uh, we haven't changed that yet because he's still in the race. And, and you know, Thursday was less than a week ago. Uh, so, you know, as a firm, we don't whip our calls around. We want to, you know, try to look at data and, and make a good assessment. The reason we thought he would, we, the reason we believed he would win um, is he'd already beaten him once in 2020. He's got the power of the incumbency. Uh, and, I, and we think uh, as a firm, we will see higher than average turnout by both women uh, and the Democratic base, women because of abortion rights and uh, Democrats because Trump's on the ballot. Now, I think the race has changed fundamentally since Thursday night, absolutely. Um, uh, we want to see if he's going to stay in the race before we make any additional call from here. So uh, I'm sitting here both as a donor uh, watching this very closely, but also as the head of a firm that advises clients on what to do. Uh, I think it's hard to make a decision until we know, until we have a little more clarity on what the president intends to do. And I think, as I said, we were telling clients yesterday on a call that we thought there was three weeks for the White House or for the Biden-Harris campaign. Yeah. I think they've got five or six days to make a decision. Let's, Let's lean on the latter just faster. a little bit. Your position as an advisor, can we just lean on that a little bit more? I want to understand from your perspective, traditionally the incumbent would have some advantages. I just wonder if it's actually a disadvantage for Biden. If you think about how 2020 played out, he got to make this a referendum on the former president. This feels like a referendum on him and not what he's delivered in three and a half years, but whether he can last four, whether he can actually keep this job for that long. How do they change that? Yeah, I think that's going to be the hardest part of the narrative to change, because I think up until Thursday, uh, this, in fact, had been still partly a referendum on the former president, uh, on Trump, uh, you know, as opposed to the sitting president. Now, I think it's really a referendum on can the sitting president not only you know, campaign for the next uh, four months, but can he serve for four more years? And and relatedly, you know, what do people think of the vice president? So again, I think in, in politics, everything is fair. Uh, I, the race changed fundamentally on Thursday night. And, uh, you know, we, I, as I said, I think we're going to find out in the next four to five days uh, whether the president is still in this race. I don't think he's got three weeks. The dam is breaking, as John said, when it look when it comes to different Democratic Congress members, when it comes to advisors, when it comes to people who are starting to leak uh, their feelings to a number of different outlets. Is the dam breaking within the inner circle of Joe Biden that we keep hearing about that keep saying, keep going, run? So, no, I, I, I'm not part of the inner circle, but I would, from everything I'm seeing and, and picking up, is that, no, the inner circle, which is his family and his closest advisors and the campaign team, uh, who've been with him a very long time, still absolutely believe he should keep fighting. Um, you know, again, this is a, a, a man who's dedicated his entire life to public service and reached the pinnacle of world power. To drop out after a really bad debate or a terrible stumble on the campaign trail it would be highly unlikely. By the way, I wouldn't advise any politician to drop out after that. Uh, you know, there's always a chance to turn things around in a campaign, and uh, they're trying very hard. It's just that, again, the pressure is building faster on him just to, to, to drop out of the race. And I think that uh, that's probably been a bit of a surprise to the campaign. Um, yeah. And th I think we will see uh, m more electeds coming out uh, saying he needs to. And and the biggest risk, in a way, is is his liability down ballot, right, with uh, elected Democrats in vulnerable seats, both in the House and the Senate, in really tough races. That's where we're hearing and I'm hearing the most pressure and, and much, much more panic, actually, than amongst the donors. I've got 30 seconds left on the clock. Charles, just to fit this in, do you think people are underestimating Kamala Harris? It's almost become oh, a joke. Absolutely. Do you think she can oh, win? Oh, absolutely. Look, you know, Kamala Harris has three advantages. One, she'll be totally underestimated. In politics, having low expectations is one of the greatest advantages you could have. Secondly, she gets all the Biden-Harris money, which is uh, not able to be transferred to any other candidate. So she gets the war chest. She'll be very well funded. Third, look at her approval rating with Democrats, 84%. She's much more popular than the president with young voters. She's very popular with black voters, and she'll help drive women, uh, turn out by women. Uh, I think people will totally underestimate the vice president. I'd put my money on her.